A positive TB test can be distressing for many people, and this is understandable, because many people think that a positive TB test means active TB disease, and they imagine that they will be discriminated against on the job as well as among friends and family. But the positive TB tests can have a variety of meanings. In this video, we'll examine what a positive TB test really means and what you should expect. There are two types of tests that are currently approved for use in determining whether or not a person is infected with tuberculosis or not in the United States. These are the TST, tuberculin skin test, or the IGRA, or the uh, interferon gamma release assay blood test. If either of these is positive, they can tell you whether or not a person has been infected with uh, tuberculosis, the tuberculosis bacterium. But what they cannot do is they cannot differentiate between active tuberculosis disease and latent infection with mycobacterium tuberculosis. The first thing we need to do if a person, a patient, has a positive tuberculosis test is we need to determine the accuracy of that test, whether in fact that person does in fact have tuberculosis or not. In the case of patients with a low risk for acquiring the disease because they live in those parts of the world where tuberculosis is not that common or if they do not have diseases such as diabetes or sarcoidosis or uh, HIV that put them at risk for progressing to active tubercular disease. These people as, are classified as low risk and a positive tuberculosis test in patients with a low risk needs to be repeated. A confirmatory test should be performed to assure that the results of the first test were in fact really positive. If the repeat test is positive, then we can assume that this person is in fact infected with mycobacterium tuberculosis. And we would then move on to the next step. If the test is negative, however, then we need to consider that the original test was a false positive test. And that in fact, the test was false positive in the case of the TST tuberculin skin test. It can be false positive if the technique that was used to uh, place the test was less than optimal, or if the interpretation of the test, the measurement of the induration, was not accurate. Or maybe the individual that we are testing was vaccinated with the BCG vaccine at some time in their lives because the BCG vaccine cross-reacts with the TST tuberculin skin test. The patient may also be infected with non-tuberculous strains of mycobacteria such as mycobacteria cansei or my mycobacteria sulgae or mycobacterium marinum. The IGRA test, the IGRA blood test, does not cross-react with the BCG vaccine so that patients with a positive TB test who were vaccinated in the past should have the IGRA blood test done to determine and to, in some cases, convince the patient themselves that they are in, fa in fact infected with the my mycobacterium, mycobacterium tuberculosis. Patients from high risk groups, patients who live in countries where mycobacterium infections 
tuberculosis infections are common or patients with uh, a high risk for progression to active tuberculosis disease, such as patients on immune suppressants for organ transplants, or patients with diabetes, or patients with other uh, immune insufficiencies, or patients who may have had diseases for which they are treated with prednisone, for example. Prednisone would suppress the immune system, and these predispose patients to progression to active tuberculosis disease. These patients do not have to have their positive TB tests repeated. However, we can assume, because of the high risk and the high likelihood that these people are infected, we can assume that their positive test does in fact signify infection with mycobacterium tuberculosis. These patients should then all have a determination made as to whether they have active tubercular disease or whether they have latent tuberculosis infection. Active tuberculosis disease can be determined by performing a chest x-ray on the patient. And changes on the chest x-ray such as pleural effusions or thickening of the pleura or granuloma or cavities on the chest x-ray signify active disease. And at the same time, we evaluate the patient to see if they have any signs or symptoms of active tubercular disease, such as weight loss, or chronic cough, or chest pain, or maybe they're coughing up blood, or they're having fever and night sweats. These are all signs and symptoms that indicate that this patient may have active tubercular disease and we would treat them as such. People who are determined to have active disease are then required to have further, further testing done on their sputum to determine whether or not actual mycobacteria are in the sputum of this patient making them contagious. This is done by doing an AFP stain on the sputum, acid fast bacteria stain that can uh, uncover mycobacteria in the sputum, as well as with the nucleic acid amplification testing, which amplifies the nucleic acid, the DNA of the microbacterium, and then measures it, or and rather at the same time this test can amplify genes that confer resistance to rifampin one of the drugs that is used to treat tuberculosis and if this gene is present then we know that the strain of mycobacterium that is found in the sputum is in fact multi-drug resistant uh, strain of mycobacterium and this would determine the types of drugs that are chosen for their treatment. All of these patients, once they have been determined that they have signs and symptoms of active tuberculosis disease, are started on TB treatment. The ones who have AFP in the sputum are considered contagious and they are isolated until their sputum is negative on three occasions, and the ones without any bacteria in their sputum are considered non-contagious, but they are continued on their regimen of treatment for active TB disease. Patients in whom the chest x-ray is found to be negative and who do not have any symptoms of active tubercular disease are considered to have latent TB infection. Prior to initiating their therapy, however, we need to know their HIV status because HIV positive patients in some instances can have uh, negative chest x-rays, be asymptomatic, 
and yet still have active tubercular disease. So that patients who have a negative chest x-ray and no symptoms but are HIV positive should have their sputum examined for mycobacterium tuberculosis. Patients with a negative chest x-ray and negative uh, signs and symptoms for tuberculosis and who are HIV negative should be started or at least offer the opportunity to start prophylaxis and treatment for their latent TB infection. This is important because 4 to 6 percent of people who have latent TB progress to active TB disease, putting themselves and people in their environment at risk. I hope this video answered your questions concerning the positive tuberculosis test and also it dispelled some of your fears and concerns. If it did, like and share the video with your friends and family. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to support the channel. Once again, I'd like to thank you for supporting the channel. Thank you for watching. Until the next video, stay healthy and stay safe.